Hey guys, it's Iz, and welcome back to another Genshin Impact lore video. This week, we're going to continue building on my theory last week about the Four Winds of Mondstadt and the map of Tevat. So let's have a little bit of a recap for that video. So we obviously know that the wolf is Andreas, and Devalin is the dragon of the east. The falcon of the west is actually Vanessa, the hero of Mondstadt who was previously the Lion of the South, and lastly, the Lion of the South is a title passed down by the Knights, who is now Jean. It's just off by a little bit. But no, you see, like I mentioned earlier, the winds come from the direction that they are called. But in addition to that, whether the entities themselves blow the wind, or if they are the wind, they too must come from that direction, which means that the abode of the entities must be the basis of the direction. Let's see how this map ends up! So that's how I think the map should actually look. So since the release of the last video, I learned a couple new facts from the comments that you guys wrote. Though we can use the sun generally in our world to find directions, it might not be the same for the world of Tavat. We don't really know if gravity in this world works the same way as in ours, so we don't know if the same rules apply. Maybe we can test that in the future, but for now, let's leave it out. But for now, we can trust word of mouth, cause how else would people be able to find their way? And the most trusted source that we can get thanks to people commenting on my videos, you guys are the real MVPs. We can take a look at the Tevat Travel Guide. Since it's used by travelers of the world, who better to trust with directions? And actually, after looking at all the entries, I could only find two that even mentioned the cardinal directions. One about the Dihua Marsh, and one about the Bright Crown Canyon. Let's talk about the Dihua Marsh entry first. The northern stretch of the Bishui River turns into a wetland. Alright, so I'm going to use a picture of a compass to help us understand the directions a little bit more. So this area is the Bishui Plains, hard to tell which of the bodies of water is the river, but we can look for directions based on the rest of the entry. If you look south beyond the stone gate, you will see a silver grass marsh, as far as the eye can see. At the southernmost part of the marsh is an inn set atop a giant rock. That is the Wangshu Inn, the highest point on the entire marsh. Look south from there and you will see the Guili Plains. You can also make out the Guyin Stone Forest across the sea. South of the stone gate is the silver grass marsh, most likely being the Dihua Marsh. Mm, looks about right so far. And at the southernmost part is the inn so the compass picture will more or less be like this. Not really looking good for the map that I envisioned in the last video. But now on to the entry of the Bright Crown Canyon. I finally got rid of that stalker from the Knights of Avonius. This valley I found at the northeast coast of the Cider Lake is still guarded by ancient mechanisms, but the soldiers responsible for holding the pass for the King of Gales were nowhere to be found now. All the winds of time had left behind were unintelligent hilly trails and silent mechanical guards. So the canyon is at the northeast coast of Cider Lake, so the compass should look like this. But wait, zoom out a bit. These compasses don't match, and even adding on my theory, it lines up a little bit with the Mondstadt to that travel guide, but not so much with Lewis. But even if it seems that they contradict each other, there is one way that this all makes sense. The map of Tavat is actually the map of a spherical world, and the compass in Liwe, this compass in Mondstadt, would make sense if they were pointing at the polar north of this world, which happens to be the Lair of Andreas, the North Wind. See, this is why I like talking about the lore of Genshin Impact. We've found many interesting things and we still have so much more to go through. We've barely scratched the surface, and I hope you guys are just as excited as I am to go through the rest of this game as time passes by. Let's see what else we can find on this world of Tevat. Windborn Outlander, as you set off on your journey once again, you must remember that the journey itself has meaning. Defeating that monster might remove this strange wind current seal thingy around the Statue of the Seven. <laughs> the 
Quinty? The bard that sits around doing nothing all day? He was once such a gentle child, now so full of rage and suffering. I will not stand for such impertinence! To ashes! I, Fischl, Princess and Dirfa Ertalung. Eat this! Let's dance! If I tell you the story with a performance, Will you believe me? Time for takeoff! Sacred name, fortune preserver. One step closer. Maybe soon I shall finally uncover the truth of this world. I swear by my sword! With sword comes shadow! Blaze into light! The verdict is... Now, I know this is a short video, but I didn't want to have information overload over in the first part of this theory. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it before, but I'm really happy that I reached the goal of 5,000 subscribers. Road to 10,000 now! But that's all I have for this week. Thanks so much for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, then like the video. Comment down below what you think of it. Subscribe for more Genshin Impact lore, and if you want to support me more, you can help me out through Patreon. The link is in the description below. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, but that's it from me, Ad Astra Abyssosk.